much. Uh, before I do this, I'm sorry, I keep giving you little bits, little bits and bobs. Um, I just want to say something about unions before I introduce our next speaker. One of the first time in the history of the National Union of Students, the executive have voted to support the boycott, disinvestment and sanctions campaign, BDS campaign. <laughs> and the students were in the forefront of the last battle. And in this university, the students did occupy because of Palestine and succeeded in getting six scholarships for Palestinian students, which is brilliant. And we're waiting for the university to start again in October because I think we're going to have huge new actions coming up. This, uh, we've got this meeting today because of the UCU, University and College Union, Union um, who are also going to be looking at, uh, hopefully, ac academic boycotts because most of the universities in Gaza have been decimated or really badly damaged. And there's been issues around academics in Israel saying the sort of things I told you earlier on about rape or genocide is possible, that there should be an um, academic boycott of, of Israel. Ken Loach, the famous film director, has talked about cultural, complete cultural boycott. There have been problems around classical tri people might know about the theatre that didn't want to, sh that had for seven years hosted um, Israeli film festival, Jewish, Jewish film festival, Israeli, which had films from all perspectives. But this year did not want to host it unless they withdrew that little bit of funding that they got from the Israeli embassy, <coughs> a couple of thousand pounds, so they, and the, the theatre were happy to give that money. Um, they refused, became a big issue, and a lot of pressure was put on the tricycle, and they capitulated and they gave in, basically. So with that, there will be battles like that around cultural, sporting, and um, academic boycotts that we had with South Africa as well. Um, I did film one union today, Asdor, which is for the workers, um, shop, often, workers. Uh, shop workers. One of the things that Willia didn't tell you, that, in that meeting she went to, that the, and I think one of the strategies <coughs> from that meeting was, how do you divide? The fear, what's happening, is that people are coming together. And people are not frightened to be called anti-Semitic because they know it's not about being anti-Semitic. Unions, students, and also community groups are coming. People who've never come on demonstrations are coming, coming for the first time and getting involved. So what they're now saying is the people who are taking direct actions in Sainsbury's and places like that are terrorists. They are frightening people, they are terrorizing the workers, and they're making the chance of violence increase um, in the streets of England, so that unions, and they called on unions to disassociate themselves with those people taking those sort of actions. Um, I think Unite did respond, I think one of the unions did, and said, well, we're concerned about health and safety of our workers, but as far as I know, no one has ever attacked any shop worker, and I wanted to show you, but we couldn't work out the, the IT here, some of the amazing creative direct actions people have taken across the world, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, Astor is a union for shop workers and they don't have a policy on this on Palestine. I phoned them up and they not only got it wrong today, they actually were uh, reporting back to someone else and I could hear them say, oh, this is the worker from Sainsbury's and she's worried about being attacked by these people. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, no, you got it wrong. But that worries me. I think we need to work on Astor big time. But one union that has been consistently supporting us have been the um, public sector civil servant union. And Andy Reid is from the executive, and I, uh, I'd like to welcome him to speak from PCF. Well, greetings from the Public and Commercial Services Union. Just to clarify, I'm no longer in the executive. I was for a, a long time term, term, but they've let me off for good behaviour. Um, I, I think the thing is about PCS, more or less since we were formed by a merger of unions, we have had a policy supporting Palestinian rights. Now, before we got it, uh, the membership basically had to take control of the union, bring back democracy, all sorts of ultra less things like annual conferences and membership voting. And, but the, in, interesting, the right wing we got rid of was basically the trade union wing of NATO. I mean, it was directly linked into all sorts of very dodgy transatlantic bodies. But the moment we got the right to debate and vote on matters, we have backed uh, Palestinian rights, we're very proudly affiliated Palestine Solidarity and Stop the War. As a union, our whole approach is we don't see anti-racism and international solidarity 
as a, a bolt on extra across there for the great and good to make speeches about occasionally. You have to integrate it into your everyday work. You have to go to your members, explain, give them the information, which is why affiliation is so important. If people are in unions that aren't yet affiliated to stop the war in Palestine solidarity, it is one of the best ways to have the argument because it puts the opponents on the back foot. You ask them, why won't you talk about this? Why won't you have the facts out? Once you have the affiliation, you have a way to make links, to get uh, people into conferences to speak. It, it's not easy getting Palestinian speakers into this country. Very often they are refused the right to travel. Uh, not quite as bad, perhaps in some ways, as the, the British government's attitude towards Egyptian trade unionists, where even if the Egyptian government will let them travel, the British government won't let them into this country, on the time. But the point is that by getting these people into the, to address the conference, you speak to the activist layer of the union who take their story back to the members. We've done that. We, we learnt something from the experience of twinning, which goes on in some towns. And we said, well, how do we, you relate that to workplaces, to unions? And we've tried to, very modestly, but we've tried to forge links with genuine democratic uh, workers' organisations, actually within Israel, but for, mainly, not exclusively, but mainly for Arab workers, who try to build a genuine democratic alternative to the corrupt and racist histrodote. And we, we, got, uh, we managed to get a couple of their people from Sort El Amal across here to speak to our people in the DWP. We found a real uh, coincidence of interest. In actual fact, if people will be aware about the work fair that the neoliberal sort of attack across Europe now is pushing through into social uh, social benefits and social security that was first trialed actually in Israel by the same company that then made money out of sending it across here. Of course people know about, I mean Amina mentioned, you have the various privatisers from G4S through to Veolia. What I would say is when you deal with these things it's very important to never see the firm as everyone within it. Exactly. It's, I mean I'm not going to apologise for Usdor. Life is too short to go into that. But something we learned just in fighting privatisation within our own bits of the public se sector is you always say to the people who are employed by a firm that's really dodgy, we fight for you as well, we want you to be given secure jobs. You know, um, If the, the council take the contract off a particularly dodgy company because they're involved in the impression of the Palestinian people, that means that th those workers in that contract should be given secure public sector jobs with full rights by the council. You always go and you don't let the other side be used as ammunition against you. Now, there are limits to that. You are not going to get, if people are plundering uh, Palestinian territory and Dead Sea minerals, if people are building missiles and drones, you're not going to get an acceptable job for them. But by and large, it's important that the union thinks like that, that you don't just boycott in the abstract the whole body. You say, how do we split it? How do we make, make the point that the firm that treats people appallingly in the occupied territories it's the same firm that treats its workforce appallingly here. And I think when you do that, you can get a long way with things, I think. And that's one of the things we've learned. As I said, we, we've, we've learned from using things like twinning, also delegations, which I know uh, PSC do quite a lot of. Um, but we've made a point of sending our general secretary and our deputy general secretary with the years with Hugh Lanning. They almost lived there anyway. <laughs> um, across the delegations, that they then come back and report. And when people go on delegations, we take them on tours of regional meetings so they talk to activists. So it goes to a wider audience. And um, I, would, I would say the other main thing we've learnt is actually a lesson taught to us by first and foremost the South African trade unions. I mean, the point was made about how solid they are, how huge the demo was in Cape Town. But in international matters, we've often found that, I mean, I know it's a South Africans call it handshake level, it's up there, it's pretty irrelevant to most working people. But at conferences, big international conferences, it's often been the South African trade unions who from their own experience know what this is like and know what has to be done and are not soft soaked. And I, I, th I think that's been quite important in, in a number of ways. Um, sorry, just lost me thread there. I think part, part of it, again, is the parallel, which we will get. I mean, I, I personally think that, and I think the whole movement is moving towards, we've seen these huge mobilisations in horror and anger about the bombing of Gaza and the oppressions of Palestinian people. Pe the people who came out on that will be asking us, what do we do next? 
and I think boycott, disinvestment, sanctions is a very, very relevant way forward. Partly, again, it throws the argument, and when people start ranting at you and calling you a terrorist, you say, here's a peaceful way to put pressure on for change. What's your objection to that? And you will flush out some of the real objections when you do that. But I, I think it's important that we do do that. And in terms of being associated with terrorists, well, P PCS is bloody proud to be associated <laughs> with direct action on this ground and a great many others. As I said, I mean, we have it on the anti-racist work. We don't just, Abbey General Secretary, make a statement. We expect our activists to get down there with banners on the front line when there are racists and fascists around. We expect our activists to build for large demonstrations in support of Palestinian rights and to take the argument back into the workplace. If you're serious about it, I think that's how you have to do it. Um, and I think, one again, one argument that comes up when you come to boycott, disinvestment and sanctions, and we've seen it a little bit, it's been down at the moment, but I think if we if we get more successes on this, it will come back. The argument will be, but all you're doing is hurting Palestinian and Arab workers, because they often are the first, exactly, the first to suffer from job loss. But I think we have to take the example from South Africa, which is quite simply those that were suffering the most at the bo bottom of all the oppression were the first to say, but it's right that you fight for sanctions. It's right that you fight for a boycott. We want you to fight with us, not to pity us and leave us to, to suffer. And I think that's an important, will be a very important lesson for us to take forward. The only other thing I would say, which I should have said at the beginning really, is in terms of trade unions, it has shifted immensely. When we first got a chance to vote as a union, affiliate to PSC, to take up the issue, we were one of a small core of troublemaking unions. We've stayed the same, they haven't retreated. <laughs> But we've now got a much, much wider audience. I was looking, actually, the, the PSC leaflet across there is a very good picture of our delegation holding up placards in Sport Palestine in 2009. I'd forgotten we'd made that much progress that far back. But for years, you could not get it onto a national agenda anywhere. The TUC would, there's a phrase called composite, which is really flanneling. You just, you, you write a motion that says support these people, and when it comes out, it means absolutely nothing because the powers that be have taken out the real words of it. We, we are now getting motions through that are serious about boycott, disinvestment and sanctions. I would hope that the unions involved in this will take it forward to the next TUC. But it's the difference is, I mean, the, the most striking example is the National Union of Students. But the truth is more and more unions are getting a policy on this matter. I think after this summer, tragically at one level, but we have to use that tragedy, a lot more unions will up, be up for discussing this and will push it into the mainstream and will hopefully, if we do that, if we make the links that people have been talking about and we stand together and we stop people being witch hunted in the press, victimised, you know, um, anathemised by Boris Johnson or whatever he's on about, that's the way we can go forward. It's become much easier to have those arguments now. People know, as, as has been said, People learnt a lot from the, uh, the coverage of the last few months. People are not going to forget that. We have to build on it, but things like that once seen, I think, stay in the mind, and I think that's the way we have to go forward. Yes. Thank you so much. I